Hello, I'm Laura Marshall. And I'm Melinda Rose, and this is Light Matters for September 12th, 2012. On this week's show, a needle-like beam propagates for an unprecedented distance without spreading, Popeye's not the only one to get a power boost from spinach, and muscles get a light workout. A needle-like beam of light that propagates for 80 microns without spreading could greatly reduce signal loss for on-chip optical systems. The beam, caused by plasmons on a nanostructured metal surface, remained very narrow and controlled, said a Harvard University-led American and French team. The metallic stripes that carry these plasmons have the potential to replace standard copper electrical interconnects in microprocessors, enabling ultra-fast on-chip communications. A fundamental problem hindering the development of such optical interconnects is that all waves naturally spread laterally or diffract during propagation. This reduces the portion of the signal that can actually be detected. The team sculpted two sets of grooves into a gold film that was plated onto the surface of a glass sheet. These tiny grooves intersect at an angle to form a metallic grating. When illuminated by a laser, the device launches two tilted plane surface waves which interfere constructively to create the non-diffracting beam. The researchers hope the findings will help develop microprocessors that are more powerful and energy efficient. The work was published online by Physical Review Letters. Vanderbilt researchers have combined a photosynthetic protein from spinach with silicon in a way that produces substantially more current than previous biohybrid solar cells. The photosynthetic protein in spinach and other vegetables, called PS1, converts sunlight into electrical energy with nearly 100% efficiency, compared with efficiencies of less than 40% from man-made devices. The current levels produced are almost 1,000 times higher than can be achieved by other such biohybrid cells composed of the plant protein and metal. If they can continue on the current trajectory of increasing both voltage and current levels, the researchers say they could reach the range of mature solar conversion technologies within three years. The device's PS1 silicon combination produces nearly a milliamp, or 850 microamps, of current per square centimeter at 0.3 volts, the team said. That's nearly two and a half times more current than the best level reported previously from a biohybrid cell. The next step is to build a functioning PS1 silicon solar cell using this design. In biophotonics news, scientists at MIT and the University of Pennsylvania blurred the boundary between nature and machines by genetically engineering muscle cells to flex in response to light. They are using the light-sensitive tissue to build highly articulated robots. Electrodes have been used to stimulate muscle fibers in the lab, but they are unwieldy and would likely bog down a small robot. Instead, the MIT team turned to optogenetics to stimulate skeletal muscle cells. They genetically modified cells to express a light-activated protein, then shined 20 millisecond pulses of blue light that caused the muscle fiber to contract. The researchers focused on skeletal muscle. Unlike cardiac tissue, which beats involuntarily, skeletal muscles, those involved in physical motions, need external stimuli to flex. The group is the first to successfully stimulate skeletal muscle using light, providing a new wireless way to control muscles. The light-sensitive muscle tissue exhibits a wide range of motions, which may enable highly articulated, flexible robots. The approach will appear in the journal Lab on a Chip. Finally today, we want to note that fiber laser maker IPG Photonics purchased J.P. Sersel Associates last week. IPG said the move will accelerate fiber laser penetration into the $800 million fine processing markets. And speaking of IPG Photonics, they are a past PRISM Award winner in the industrial lasers category. If you'd like to join them in the winner's circle this year with your innovative product, you have until the end of September to apply. Visit photonicsprismawards.com for details. Well, that's it for this edition of Light Matters, Photonics Media's weekly newscast. We'd like to hear from you. Tell us what you like or don't like about our program. We welcome your comments and suggestions at lightmatters at photonics.com. You'll find links to share and subscribe to Light Matters by clicking the Share with Friends button on our video player. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.